In this demonstration, we're going to have a look at the Exchange Mailbox Server Role Requirement Calculator. What this is designed to do is Microsoft has provided this to allow you to estimate requirements for your Exchange Server based on your current environmental properties. And the tool is the Exchange Mailbox Server Role Requirements Calculator. It's macro-enabled Excel spreadsheet and it collects user inputs. And based off those inputs, it will allow us to calculate various requirements for our Exchange Server Mailbox Server Role implementation. So what we'll do here is we'll just launch up Excel and within Excel, as we can see here, we've got our little uh, spreadsheet here. And what we're going to do here is just start filling in this spreadsheet to give us some estimates about the server hardware required for our Exchange implementation. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is our server will actually be multi-role. So just to say yes to that. We are also going to virtualize it. So let's just say yes to this. High available deployment, definitely we're virtualizing it. So we definitely want to make sure that in the case of a failure of one of our Hyper-V hosts that we have redundancy and business continuity in place. Number of mailbox servers hosting Active Directory. What we'll do here is we'll just change this to four. And then what we'll do here for the number of database availability groups, let's set that to two. Uh, next little bit here is just our mailbox database copy configuration. So I'm happy with three HA database copies and the number of lag copies. Well, I think I'll set that to one. Next little bit is just our exchange data configuration here. So the data overhead factor, I'm happy with 20%. Mailbox moves weak percentage, I'm happy with 1%. In the case of the dedicated maintenance, yep, I'm happy with that. But what I want to do here is just in the case of the percentage here, let's drop that to 15 for the loan free space percentage. Let's scroll this down a little bit. Next thing we've got here is our Exchange I.O. configuration. Just going to leave all the defaults there. Then down to our Tier 1 user mailbox configuration here. So the total number of Tier 1 users, I'm actually going to only have 500, I think. Then what we'll do here for the projected mailbox number growth percentage, what we'll do here is we we'll specify 5% here. Total send receive per day, let's drop that down to, let's make that 50 messages. So we'll drop on 50 messages here. Average message size, let's make that 50 kilobytes. And then what we'll do for mailbox size limit, let's just make that, in this case here, 1024 megabyte. Personal archive, what we'll do here is we'll specify that as 2048. Deleted item recovery, let's make that 20 for the number of days that they can retrieve their data. Single item recovery, yep, I'm happy with that enabled. Calculator version storage or calendar version storage here, I'm happy with this enabled as well. Scroll down a little bit further. Won't bother with the tier two. What we'll do here is just down to our backup configuration here. What we'll do in the case of the protection is we'll make that software VSS backup. And what we'll do is we're happy with the full weekly daily incremental database and log isolation configured. Yeah, we'll set that to yes as well. And we'll set uh, everything else as default here for the backup truncation and the network failure. Now let's just change some of the disk settings here. So in the case of the database here, what we'll do here is we'll just make that one gig, sorry, thousand gig. And uh, what we'll do here for the log, let's just make that 500 gig. So I will just move that up to 500 gig. We're happy with the disks and then in the restore alone, let's just drop that to one and a half. All right, so I'm happy with the input. Let's have a look at the role requirements here. So what we've got here is we've got our role requirements. So if we scroll through all of this, we can see that it's taking the information it's telling us the number of servers, so it's filling in the information there. If we have a look at the activation scenarios, again, it's giving us some data that we would look through before we deploy our servers. Distribution tab, so it's giving us some information relating to the number of servers and how those servers will be set up, how we're going to distribute this in the cluster. Loan requirements, so it gives us information yet again about our loans. And if we have a look at the backup, we get some information regarding the backups as well. So what we would then do with this is we would then take this information and we would then use that information to provision our servers. And that was a very quick demonstration of having a look at the Exchange Calculator. Thank you.